Welcome to the Currently Cringing Podcast. I'm your host, Anisha Ramakrishna. I'm a TV personality and entrepreneur. Join me as I spill the chai on my cringeworthy life experiences with a side of dating, pop culture, and lots of laughs. Hey guys, welcome to Currently Cringing. What a whirlwind month this has been. I mean, hosting the turkey trip, coming back, getting married, and then spending my honeymoon basically at BravoCon. And this episode is basically going to be like a, if you know, you know. If you watch Bravo, you're going to get it. If you don't, no comment. So this was the second BravoCon ever. And if you don't know what BravoCon is, shame on you. But basically, it's this huge conference that has all the Bravo celebrities and all things Bravo. So the first BravoCon was in 2019 at the Javits Center. And at the first BravoCon, Family Karma was announced, meaning our trailer was shown, but we weren't there. And then, of course, after that, we were in a lockdown and then the pandemic and BravoCon last year was canceled. So this was the first time ever Family Karma as a cast had really ever been in public together for Bravo, NBC. So it was three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we had about 10,000 fans each day walk through the conference, which was mind-blowing. I mean, VIP tickets went for about $3,000 and it was sold out. So it was wild. Being a noob, I did not know what to expect. And of course, being the Indians that we are, we thought, you know, let's just go. It's going to be amazing. But we didn't really think people would know us. Because we're like, you know, that Indian show on Bravo. We're not like housewives. Boy, was I wrong. I mean, the amount of love and the amount of people that knew who we were and, you know, waited in line to see us. I mean, the whole experience was surreal. I myself have watched, you know, Bravo shows. I mean, Real Housewives of OC since I was in high school And now I'm 38, so I was excited to see a lot of Bravo celebrities. So not only did I attend as, you know, someone on NBC and as talent, you know, for Family Karma, but I also attended as a fan because I've watched Bravo for so many years and I was excited to meet a lot of these housewives. So they put us up at the Gansvort in meatpacking and it was like something out of, you know, a movie. I mean, I I don't know how else to explain it other than if you're a big Disney fan and you're staying at a hotel with like Mickey Mouse and Minnie and all the characters, the Gansfort was just roaming with housewives and Bravo lebs. It was just wild. So I I get to the airport, you know, take off, I, I land. My flight was delayed two hours. Hopefully, you know, thankfully I made it. I get to the Gansfort. And I'm checking in, and all of a sudden, I see Golnessa and Reza from Shaws of Sunset, and they come up to me and hug me and say hello. And of course, we've all been chatting in the DMs, so, you know, Shaws of Sunset, shout out to them. Golnessa, Reza, and MJ from Shaws, they're going to be having their own show on Bravo, their spinoff. I mean, I knew we'd been chatting in the DMs and they've always been supportive of our show, Family Karma, but for them to actually just scream my name and come up to me and hug me as soon as I walked into the lobby was just unbelievable. Like you meet these people online and then you don't know if they're actually going to acknowledge you in real life. And this is the first time I'm meeting them in person and I'm also a fan It's 7 a.m. because I took the red eye, of course, coming from Scottsdale. And they went to get coffee, and I'm checking in. And then I go upstairs, you know, I get in the elevator to go to my room. And all of a sudden, it's just me and Teresa Judice in the elevator, which, you know, again, like fangirl moment. And I'm just awkwardly staring at her, and it's just me and her. She's like waiting for her makeup artist. My makeup artist is scheduled to come like any minute. 
I'm also looking at her like, oh my God, like you've been in jail and I've read all your books and you've flipped a table and screamed prostitution whore. I mean, all these iconic moments are like going through my brain and I'm awkwardly staring at her and I just say, you know, I've been watching you since I was in college and now I'm 38 and I just got married and she just stares at me and smiles and says congratulations and tells me I'm sweet and then gets off probably trying to escape this panic room of an elevator that I've created for us and you know she was very sweet but I I definitely made it awkward for her and then I get off on my floor and across my my room is like the whole married to medicine gang and they're getting lit and mind you it's 7 a.m but everyone's getting ready for hair and makeup because you know these things start early so I get into my room shower unpack and you know my makeup artist Juanita glamorous by Juanita you know if you ever need a makeup artist in the tri-state area her team I mean they are incredible I mean she always does my makeup in New York City, but I can't recommend her enough. So I have to be ready in about two hours. I have my first panel called The Right Relationship, and it's got, you know, Heather Gay from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Golnessa from Shaw's, Brandy Glanville from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Vicky Gunvilson. I mean, OG Vicky Gunvilson is on a panel with me. Like, I'm speechless. Austin Kroll from Southern Charm. I don't really watch Southern Charm, but, you know, he was he was a doll. My first outfit is this stunning lime green jumpsuit. You know, it's BravoCon. Like, y- you kind of want to look like Met Gala, like campy. You know, I definitely understood the assignment, you know. Like, most of my outfits, like, there's two places to wear them to. You can either wear them to BravoCon or you can wear them to live, the nightclub in Miami. Maybe even Vegas. And there's transportation arranged from us. So I I go to the meeting room where we're all supposed to meet, you know, for our panels. And then they pick us up and take us to the Javits Center from the Gansvort. And so I'm in the meeting room at the Gansvort. And there's Erica Jane. She's wearing a flannel skirt set. I mean, the woman is stunning. Like, I know... You know, she's in trial right now and she had to give her $2 million earrings or whatever and she's trying to get them back right now and, you know, she's probably committed fraud. I don't know. But, I I mean, I'm just in awe of all these people. You know, I introduced myself to her. I said, hi, I'm Anisha. I'm on Family Karma, the Indian show. And she's like, nice to meet you. She was a doll stunning. I mean, all of these people are flawless in person. Like there's a lot of plastic surgery going on, but you know, I was thinking about it and I was actually having this discussion with, you know, my friends, like, what do we expect from these women? Like, do we age naturally or do we get plastic surgery? Like what's the alternative? Like, okay, they're, they're all look plasticky and definitely have all gotten a lot of work done, but what's the alternative? Like, aging gracefully and naturally? Like, that's not an option for me. So I get it. Like, I, I'm going to look like that too, like a bunch of wax. And it's okay. It's working. You know, they definitely have a presence. Like, you know, you see these women on TV and, you know, most of the times they're like memes and people are making fun of them, but it's like... They're definitely sharp. You know, these women, they're intelligent. They know how to work a room. They've got a presence. They've all got an it factor. You know, it's there's a reason they are on Bravo. So now we're at the lobby, from the meeting room to now the lobby, and then we get in a car, and now I'm in a van with, like, people from Real Housewives of Potomac, and it, 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 it's like a clown show, right? It's like a Bravo clown show circus, you know, because now we're in a sea of like sequin jumpsuits and rhinestone pants, orange tuxedos, like, you know, people went all out and people understood the assignment. Like it's Bravo con. I'm in like eight inch Versace Mary Janes. And, you know, mama didn't raise no fool. Okay. Like, yes, I am, you know, fangirling, but I'm only... 
talking to and approaching people who have open energy. You know, like there were some people that definitely were closed off or didn't know, you know, who I was and would look at me a certain way and I wouldn't go up to those people. I won't name them. But for the most part, you know, all of these women, you know, were welcoming and kind and smiling. And, you know, your girl looked like someone too, okay? I, I hired a glam squad, you know, I, I did it right. I was in it to win it. You know, I wore eight inch heels all weekend long, had my 21 inch hair extensions. You know, your girl showed up. So, you know, people were looking at me too, like, okay, you look like someone, like someone who belongs here, but who are you? Because obviously we're a new show and most people watch Housewives, but, you know, I made sure people knew that I was there. Let's just put it that way. So then you guys know I just got married and my first panel happens and, you know, the questions are like, have you had a threesome? Like, have you been part of the Mile High Club? And I'm so boring, you know. All my answers were like, no. And then all of a sudden, they asked, like, what's the craziest place, like, you've had sex? And, you know, again, I'm boring. And then, you know, someone says the Zara fitting room. And at that point, you know, I'm like, I'm done. I'm done playing this game because I stand no chance. And then I look in front of us in the panel at the audience and I see Chrissy Teigen in front of us. And I did have multiple opportunities to take photos with Chrissy Teigen, but I didn't. You know, she was being bombarded, and I, I just didn't want to be that person. I know. And now it's Friday night, so the big night is, you know, watch what happens live, Legends Ball. And it's literally every Bravo Liberty, over 150 of us, have been invited. And we're at this ball and on a stage, and everyone's going to see us, and it's a chance for all the fans to interact with us, and a chance for all of us to meet all the other Bravo celebrities. So I go back to the room and change into this Falguni Shane Peacock Lenga. and if you don't know, Falguni Shane Peacock is also the designer I wore on my wedding day. It's, you know, she's a huge designer. It's a husband and wife designer team. And it's the equivalent of like, you know, Versace or Givenchy, you know, it, it's, it's a big deal. And so I'm wearing this Falguni Lenga for the Legends Ball. And I get there and let me tell you, I made sure people knew I was there. I, I, I would say I was the best dressed. You know, people said Family Karma was best dressed. And out of that, you know, I'd say I was. And a lot of people told me that. And I'm, I'm not one to brag, uh, but this was definitely a brag-worthy moment. I mean, I showed up like a fucking bride. Like, it was my wedding weekend all over again at BravoCon. I met my Real Housewives of Miami family. You know, everyone on that show is amazing and so supportive. Marisol Patton is actually, you know one of my dear friends and actually met her tarot reader, you know, right before I met my now husband, you know, she told me her tarot reader is lucky for love. And he actually told me I would be meet my husband in April. And you know, I met my husband in March. So that's a fun fact. DM me if you want his information. So now, not only are all the Bravo celebrities and the fans at the Legends Ball, but so are all the big kahunas from NBC. I mean, we met the global chairman. We met the head of, like, marketing. I mean, we're talking, like, all the head honchos were there. And now the next day, it's Saturday, and I have, like, a 6 a.m., you know, call time. We're, we're getting hair and makeup done. We have our Family Karma panel, which is the panel with all our castmates and we're all answering questions with fans and there's a family karma bar like a literal bar you know to drink at the convention and there's huge posters of all of us I also have a panel with Larsa Pippen and Marisol Patton and Brian Benny from my cast I mean it was just insane I don't want to start a rumor, but I was told that Larsa Pippen is dating Michael Jordan's son, and I believe he was there. And, you know, no shade, but, you know, if I was Michael Jordan's son, uh, I, I don't know if I'd be at BravoCon. Just saying, you know. 
they did have a bunch of green rooms for us and it's just surreal because during the breaks we'd go to these green rooms that have like you know craft service and like drinks and just round tables and you know it's like Dorinda sitting there and Luann and you know Cynthia Bailey's just like lying down taking a break it's, it's just like I don't know I felt like I was in the twilight zone like just unreal you know Anderson Cooper's there I saw Hoda from Kathy Lee and Hoda seeing Kyle Richards I mean the list goes on So I think after day two, like everything was going well. And then I'm here thinking like, okay, there's going to be a performance. We were told there's going to be a big performance. So I was looking forward to the performance. And, you know, somehow I had made up this idea in my head that because it's called the Legends Ball and, you know, Chrissy Teigen's here, maybe John Legend is performing. But, you know, instead, I think... My Bravo dreams were, like, all shattered when, like, Melissa Gorga from Housewives of New Jersey came out and just started lip-syncing her song on display. And I don't know. It just it was just like a clown moment, you know? And I love her. You know, I know they're all, like, feuding and beefing with the family, like the Gorgas and the Judices. But, you know, I, I still love Joey Gorga and Melissa, but it kind of, like, shattered my Bravo dreams. Like, I had this idea of everyone at Bravo as like, you know, too cool for school. But maybe after two days of BravoCon, like I realized, okay, I'm a normal person and all of these people are not. Like a lot of these people, their lives are Bravo. You know, like they live, breathe, eat, sleep, Bravo. And maybe I have a very normal real life uh, and an Indian family to keep me humble you know um so yeah I just I don't think it would ever be my life you know these people like this is their life and they love it like they're obsessed with this idea and themselves and uh, I I hope I never get to that place to be honest And I think as a cast, we're very grounded and we actually have real friendships. And I hope that never changes. And I think that's part of the reason people like us. And, you know, the one thing people kept telling us the entire time was, oh, my God, you guys are hands down the most polite, like normal, fun, kind cast. But but I think that's just because, you know, first of all, we're all educated. We all come from like, you know family backgrounds where, you know, we all worked hard, not to say the housewives and all those other people have not just, it's just different. You know, I don't know how else to explain it. We're just, we're Indian. We have like these strong, you know, values, you know, and I, I don't think, I, I really hope none of us get to a place where this becomes, you know, all we care about. I call it the clown show. I hope I hope we never become part of the clown show and we just maintain, you know, part of our dignity and and who we are as real people in this world. And we're not just doing things for the sake of doing things for television or attention. And then by day three, I mean, I was up for hair and makeup, but by day three, you know, which was just all like fan photos, like where we went into different rooms and took photos with fans, which I hate calling people fans because, you know, I'm just, it just makes me uncomfortable. But people who watch our show and enjoy us, you know, I mean, we're not housewives famous, so we're not like mobbed every day. I mean, you should have hear, hear, heard the screaming when housewives would enter the room. I mean, different housewives. It was like pandemonium. But it was so amazing to meet everybody and to know that so many people watch our show. But by day three, you know, it felt like the movie Get Out, but BravoCon. You know, by day three, I was like, okay, I need to go home. Like, I'm, I'm done with the circus. Like, we're in a sea of leather. I mean, I wore leather, too. Like, we're in a sea of, like, leather and hot pink and, like, rhinestones. Like, like I'm good. And everyone's like, oh, my God, this has been an incredible experience. And, yes, it was incredible. But after three days, I mean, I mean, if it had been a fourth day, I think I would have just voluntarily left. 
And so now I did all my photos and, you know, I was even in Heather Gay's like hotel room, just chatting it up. Like it was just, I don't even know how to explain like, you know, Jen Shaw from Salt Lake City, like who's probably going to jail, who has been on our podcast. You should listen to that episode. You know, she crashed and ended up at the rooftop of the Gansport somehow, you know, but, but I heard the minute she pled guilty, Andy Cohen was like, you know, we're done and uh, totally understandable. It was just like, like we were in the twilight zone. Like I say, I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. I mean, one of my rides to the Javits Center, I was with Taylor Armstrong from like Housewives of Beverly Hills. She was a gem. She's now on Real Housewives of Orange County. I mean, these are all people that I've watched, you know, since I was in college. And they're still on the channel, which which blows my mind. Like, this is their life. And, and they're definitely getting paid a lot of money. Like, they're getting paid good money to stay on there. I mean... How much money is Lisa Rinna getting paid to get booed off stage at BravoCon and stay the entire three days? I mean, how much money are they paying Kathy Hilton to fight with her sister? I mean, it's Kathy Hilton. For her, a million dollars is like a dollar. But she was there, hon, sitting on the same stage as me. Me and Kathy Hilton, hun, in the same room, boo. God knows what these people are making. So it's the final day, and I'm set to leave Monday. It's now Sunday. We finish. We wrap it up. We all, like, have our little, you know, hellos and goodbyes. The next day, you know, I, I go to East Village Pizza, which is, remember, where I originally wanted to get proposed to. I got my husband a little pizza from there, and I'm all excited, I, you know, had lunch with Ditz from the pod. He will be back soon. It's just been chaos. He will be back. And, you know, we had a little Thai lunch, caught up. I mean, shout out to Ditz. He's, he's lost about 20 pounds. He looks incredible. And so, you know, went to the airport, you know, with the Bravo car service. Saw Phaedra and Lisa Barlow. I think Lisa Barlow had like maybe eight Louis suitcases with like protective covering and like another eight hard shell to me suitcases like shout out to Lisa Barlow you know a day one fan and friend I saw Phaedra from Housewives of Atlanta I mean Phaedra I think Phaedra had like eight people in her glam squad so we go to the airport it's 3 30 my flight is at six we go to the airport it's at JFK, which is a trek. We get to JFK at 5. I go to the bag drop-off, and I never check in a bag, you know, because your girl's on a plane, like, every other week. Like, ain't nobody got time. But it's BravoCon. I've got, like, a 25-pound Falguni Shane Peacock Langa in my suitcase and, like, 20 rhinestone jumpsuits and, like, glitter bustiers. So there's a lot going on. We need to check in a bag. I get to the check-in, and they're like, you're six minutes past the cutoff time. Apparently, for JFK, the Delta cutoff for a luggage check-in is an hour, and it's a hard cutoff. They're not going to let you on the plane, even if you're a fucking six minutes late. So I'm now panicking, because it's not like I'm going back to Miami anymore these days, you know? It's like... I'm going back to the fucking desert, okay? Fucking Phoenix, okay? Those flights don't run every hour, hon. So now I'm panicking because I already had a delayed flight, you know, coming into BravoCon, and now I can't get on the plane. So I contact Bravo Travel, and they're like, well, uh, you're going to have to leave the next morning. I'm in a panic now because I just want to get home. You know, I, I was just in, like the Get Out movie from BravoCon, I'm exhausted. It's been three days of pandemonium. I just want to be in my bed, and I'm really panicked about my comedy show at Caroline's because it's coming November 3rd. By the way, if you're in the New York City area, Caroline's on Broadway, 7 p.m., Thursday, November 3rd, 
Brian Benny is hosting, and it's my first comedy show, guys. I am shitting a brick. I'm shaking in a corner, but, you know, we will survive. We are working on that. But anywho, I got to get home. I can't be stuck at JFK. So Bravo Travel's telling me I can only leave the next morning now because it's like a hard cutoff. And they're apologizing, you know, like, no, it's no one's fault. And they're like, well, we can put you up at the TWA airport. And they're like, oh, it's a cool airport. Don't worry. Meanwhile, if you know me, like I know I'm at BravoCon and I know I'm with like Kathy Hilton. And, you know, there's a lot of people there who are bougie. But your girl's a little bougie, too. OK, at the end of the day, you know, Chitra Ramakrishna is my mom. OK, I was raised like a queen doing queen shit, you know, with a queen aesthetic doing queen things, okay? I've, I've had some pretty nice life experiences. I'm just, just a normal person, though, you know? So she mentions TWA, and that might be exciting for some influencer types or, you know, people who like that quirky shit. Like, no. To me, that's like saying I'm going to stay in the hotel where The Shining was shot, okay? That's like horror movie vibes for me. But I don't have a choice, so we're now going to wake up again the following morning at 4 a.m. because our flight is at 7 and I definitely do not want to miss the bag cutoff. I can't believe this is happening. But, you know, when you're just so tired, you're just like, I'm not going to argue with the Delta attendant. I'm just going to stay at this TWA hotel, you know, it's supposed to feel like you're in like the 80s or the 70s again. But, you know, to me, it's just like... I'm going to die. Like I'm going to get murdered at this hotel. So then instead of going back first to the hotel, I'm like, let me go see my friend Marie. Shout out to my friend Marie, who was my coworker for many years at my Ellie Tahari days, who waited in line at BravoCon to see me, even though she's my friend. And shout out to Gail Dreyfus, another BFF, who flew from Miami to New York to support me at BravoCon. I mean, I really have the best friends, guys. And so I went to Marie's house in Brooklyn, and we literally talked shit for hours. It was like the good old days. And then I made my way to the TWA hotel, which definitely was like from the movie The Shining. Like all I needed was like red rum spray painted on, you know, the walls and the hallways, and it would have been like, Perfect, like straight from the movie. Because, you know, as much as people might think it's cute and kitschy and fun, like, no, I was like, this is terrifying. And then I get my flight confirmation from Bravo. And my confirmation number is fucking D-H-Y-I-N-G. DM me for the screenshot because I can't even make this shit up. Really? My confirmation number is the word dying? At this point, I'm just texting everyone. You know, I'm screenshotting the confirmation number. I'm like, pray for me. You know, I, I hope I make it on this flight. Because the truth is, the flight that I'm actually on now, the next morning, is the flight that Bravo originally put me on. And I called Bravo and I was like, can you please change it to Monday? Because I just want to go home. Meanwhile, I wasn't able to get on that plane for whatever re uni reason. The universe did not want me on that plane. And now I'm on this flight with the confirmation code dying. Anywho, I go to bed, wake up at 4 a.m., get the hell out of the TWA hotel. I have nothing to report on that hotel other than it was creepy like some people may enjoy it like and some people may want to stay there like I'm good like I'm I'm okay I don't need to stay in such places so then I get to JFK it's early I'm lugging this pizza around like a mad woman you know people are commenting like god bless you like you're carrying that pizza like yes I've been carrying this pizza around for my husband for 24 hours because that's what you do when you're in love so now I'm raging. So I'm at the airport. We made it. We're at the gate and there's a Shake Shack. And I don't fucking care if it's 6 a.m. 
And now I got to be careful, you know, which is another reason I didn't really like cause a scene with the Delta agent when she said I was like six minutes past the cutoff time. Because you got to realize now, there's a lot of people here from BravoCon now, right? Because there was a lot of people on my flight from Phoenix, you know, from to BravoCon. A lot of people, a lot of people know me from Bravo these days especially at TSA. I don't know what it is with the TSA agents, but they all watch Family Karma. Shout out to all the TSA agents. You know, I see you. You know, they're all so kind. And even with a mask, guys, like people, people recognize me. And remember, I, I, the masks are fucking annoying, but I've started wearing them again in the plane because, you know, people are coughing and yakking and people are just fucking nasty. People don't cover their mouth when they sneeze. Like it's a whole thing. So, anywho, we're at the airport, and, you know, I'm raging, okay, because it's like 5 a.m., you know, we're about to board, and I'm at Shake Shack. I don't give a fuck. You know, I, I've lost my marbles. It's like three days of BravoCon, a flight flight now that I couldn't get on. You made me stay at the TWA hotel. Yeah, I bet Kathy Hilton flew fucking private, you know, and that, it just motivated me. Like, I got to fucking bust my ass so I can fly private and not have these situations. And so I'm at Shake Shack at this ungodly hour. And most of the time, I just, like, have some green tea and call it a morning. But, you know, I'm raging. So I get a shroom burger and some cheese fries and I go to Dunkin' Donuts, and I get a jelly donut, and I get a fucking Coke, and a green tea. And now everyone at the gate recognizes me from Family Karma. And yes, I am gorging on a shroom burger at like 5.30 a.m., and it's okay. You know, yes, I am drinking a Coke. Like, what the fuck are you looking at? So what? That's the shit you'll do after, you know skipping a flight and ending up at the TWA hotel. You're just happy you're alive and you just want to go home. And Shake Shack will bring you like peace at those hours. You know that meme, like anything goes at the airport, like anything goes at the airport, you know? And I know everyone loves Delta, but you know, maybe Delta's only good for you if you fly into Delta hubs, but for the rest of the world, for the rest of us that fly to major cities, uh, we, we use American. And I know American sucks, right? As my friend says, it's like for peasants. Like, yes, I'm a peasant using American and it's okay. At least the planes fucking take off. Okay. It may smell like a toilet. There may be like chips on your seat from like the person before you, but at least the plane gets off the ground. You know, the, f- the flight to Iceland was canceled. We had a flight delay to Miami. Then we had another flight delay to BravoCon. And then they didn't let me on the plane to come home from BravoCon. So in my book, you know, fuck Delta. You know, Delta is like the hot girl that's going to date you for your money. American's wifey, Okay. She's reliable. And I know that's a hot take, but there, I said it. So we're about to get on this plane. And then lo and behold, I get that feeling. And I don't know how else to describe this feeling with just, without sounding completely disgusting. But it's like a bunch of hot gunk ending up in your underwear, okay? It's that first period blow. And all of a sudden, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm not supposed to get my period now. It's, like, supposed to come in a couple of days, but this has been happening, right? As you all listen to the pod, you know, it's just been showing up. That little bitch has been showing up, but thankfully we still have her, okay? It's like it's like a curse. Like, she's annoying as hell, but you want her. So I get my fucking period. It's a hot mess, to say the least. Go to the bathroom, clean up, board the flight, and safely made it home, despite my confirmation number being dying. The car server car service picks me up and you know you know it's bravo it's nbc they take care of you you know like they they pick you up they drop you off i get home you know my instagram feed is just completely bravo con and 
you know, Cheryl from Alabama because I, I followed everyone back. And shout out to all the Caucasians because those are the people who showed up. You know, we're an Indian show on Bravo, but 90% of our fans, you know, they're Caucasian, which is incredible. You know, it's amazing. You know, yeah, the brown people, the Daisies, the South Asians, like, yeah, thanks for watching. But the people who actually pay money to come to BravoCon and support us, you know, they're people named Cheryl from Alabama. So I made sure to follow everyone back, except now my Instagram like feed is, you know, Karen. And that's okay, because I love Karen for coming to BravoCon and spending her money to support me. And now that I'm home, I am sick again, yet again. And I was supposed to go to Atlanta, and I had to cancel because your girl can't be on another flight. So I think I'm laying low, working hard as hell for the comedy show, November 3rd, 7 p.m., New York City. If you're in the area, I'll see you there. It's a big deal, guys. The honeymoon at BravoCon was incredible. I am back with my husband. I am on a Z-Pack, hopefully recovering soon. And, you know, I just, I'm just going to take some rest. And thank you for listening, guys. I love you. And we definitely have some amazing guests lined up. But a lot of you are telling me you're enjoying these solo rants. You guys, you guys love the Girl Interrupted solo rants. Thank you for listening. Till next time, guys. Take care and be safe. Thank you so much for sipping the chai with me this week. If you like the show, remember to rate, review, and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram at Anish Ramakrishna. I would love to hear from you. Join me next week for more chai. Thank you so